Welcome back to another edition. Eat my shorts right here at the ranch chair, smoking me a lucky strike, sorting, sorting the world's problems out one cigarette to a time. We just don't know. So, uh, I got this idea. I was fucking around on the computer watching some old cartoons. I don't know if you ever heard of Private Snafu, right? Uh, he was the Mr. Bungle of his time period, only, uh, you know, during World War II for the uh, U.S. and Allied soldiers. And it kind of inspired a good rant here, because I've heard a lot in the online preparedness community talking about gas masks, and uh, I do know a few things about gas masks, and not from a practical standpoint, or from the preparedness standpoint, but from the surplus standpoint. So what is a gas mask and how does it work? Well, in history, uh, they came about as hoods that actually were a chemical kind of like one of those uh, masks you saw during the Spanish flu, but they had a special chemical on it. And uh, to activate it, you'd have to urinate on it and hold this over your mouth and your nose. Well, people figured out pretty quickly that that was pretty fucking dumb. So they came out with filters made of asbestos and an actual form-fitted hood that sealed to your face. Now, this will come in handy here in a minute. So what do we actually know about gas masks? Um... They, they were one of the most widely issued and widely made pieces of equipment and hardware during both the First and the Second World War. And there's a reason for it. 99% um, of all the poisonous fumes and toxic weapons that people have created during gas warfare have actually come from the chemical and dye industry. Um, your sarin, your tobin, your VX, right? All byproducts of the dye industry, right? And of course, you got chlorine, phosgene, phosphine, sulfur. Um, you have things like tear gas, which is CS. You know. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to buy or how to do it or anything else. Um, myself, personally, I think gas masks are kind of fucking stupid. Unless you're in a very, very situationally dependent circumstance, like you know for a fact there's going to be toxic fumes or potentially chemical warfare such as CS gas used and yes CS gas is tear gas and it is chemical warfare it's actually banned for use on other soldiers however law enforcement military can use it on you right now if you're gonna be in a bad situation and you live in a big city and you're worried about pepper spray and CS gas those are gonna be the, the common ones that you're gonna face in addition to smoke uh, a gas mask is not a bad thing to have Okay, if you are one of them crazy people that thinks, oh shit, oh god, nuclear fallout, and it's coming right now, and train derailments and, and, and chemical spills, and oh my, um, I'm not going to tell you not to buy one. I would recommend you get a new one over a military surplus, because uh, with Amira, you're generally getting better quality. Uh, I would also recommend getting one of their hazard suits, like a mop suit, like one of them old school things. I'm sure some of you Desert Storm and... 1990s era Marines know what the fuck I'm talking about with a mop suit, spelled M-O-P-P. -P. I'm sure some of you have some horror stories about having to do fucking PT in one of them damn things. Uh, especially in any kind of warmer climate, it'd just be absolutely fucking miserable. And of course, the dudes in Chernobyl, they didn't really have adequate PPE, for lack of a better term. And uh, most of them died of cancer later. So I want you to take this into, into account, okay? If you think your threat level is going to be so high that you're going to need a gas mask, get the damn suit for it, the mop suit for it too, and practice with it and actually do some field training and exercise with this damn thing. And if not, um, surplus gas masks will work as long as you get a NATO spec filter and a gas mask from a country that took NATO filters. I think it's 26.5 millimeter threads. Um, they make new filters for them. And as long as your gas mask isn't turning yellow around the eye holes or uh, the like the black plastic is turning white or yellow, you should probably be okay. Right? And you can still buy these things from the Korean War. The USM9, which is a perfectly adequate gas mask, you can buy them still sealed in a can. I know I had one as a kid, you know, and I fucked around with it quite a bit. I always kept it on standby just in case somebody ever decided to kick tear gas in at me, you know. I mean, 
if you're going to be prepared, you might as well be prepared, right? And bonus points, if you're, if you're actually planning on using a gas mask and using it to survive, uh, I would recommend you take it on a 120 degree day to the range and practice shooting with the gas mask and a filter installed. And you'll see very quickly what I'm talking about. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I don't tell people run out and go buy body armor. This is one of the reasons why I don't tell people go out and buy a chemical suit and a gas mask, and this is one of the reasons why I say, if you're planning on fleeing, man, you're going to be doing it with the clothes you got on your back and maybe what you can carry in your bag. You ain't going to be getting very far unless you're peak physical condition. And uh, that's kind of why I want to leave this gas mask rant, because, you know, I see people talking about these things quite often, and uh, there's a lot of misinformation about it. You know, you, you got to have the thing sealed to your face properly, and if you're a man with a porno mustache like me, you're going to have to shave first. So... Just throwing it out there, and uh, as always, if you don't like what I have to say about gas masks or mass paranoia or panic buying, then you're part of the problem, and you eat my fucking shorts, and have a fantastic Monday.